So continuing on with example 3 here in 6.7, the fundamental theorem of algebra, um, now I want to write a polynomial function f of least degree that has real coefficients, a leading coefficient of 1 and 2, and 1 plus i as zeros. Okay, so these are the zeros. This is actually easier than, well, this problem is actually easier than doing the other thing. Basically what we're saying is we have complex numbers come in pairs. You need to remember that when you're doing this. Every time you have a complex number, you don't just have one plus i, but you're also going to have one minus i. Every i comes in a pair, because when you're solving quadratics, it's plus or minus. So they're going to come in a pair. So you need to keep that in mind. So actually what this is saying is, when we're saying what the zeros are, we're saying that x equals 2, because here's a 2. We're saying that x also equals 1 plus i, but remember it also equals 1 minus i. So we have one, two, three answers that we know of right now. So when I set this up, I solve them like before to find out what my factors actually are, which means I subtract 2 onto that side to get x minus 2 equals 0. I'm going to take all of this and subtract all of that over to the other side to get x minus 1 plus i. Then I'm going to take all of this and subtract all of this on to the other side to get x minus 1 minus i which means this is okay, but I need to distribute that negative through. So this is x minus 2, but this, I need to eventually distribute that negative through and distribute that negative through. So when we do that, I still have x minus 2. That's negative 1. That's a negative i. This is a negative 1. That's a positive i. So, so far here are my 1, 2, 3 different items that I need to um, distribute and FOIL to see what I get for answers. So I distribute, I'm going to start with these two because they're the crazier of the two. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. x times i is positive ix. Then we move on to the negative 1. Negative 1 times x is negative x. We have negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. And I'll move this over here for the time being. Um, then we have negative 1 times i, which is negative i. I move on to this. Negative i times x is negative ix. Negative i times 1 is positive i. And I'm just lining them up right underneath there because it's just going to be easy to remember that they cancel out. And negative i times i is negative i squared. So let's line up everything that cancels out. Those two cancel right out, so the ix's are gone and the i's are gone. And what we need to remember from chapter 5 was that i squared equals negative 1. So really this down here is negative, negative 1. So I replace that i squared with a negative 1. So I really have x squared minus x and minus x. So minus x and minus x is minus 2x down here. And this is a 1. And this is negative, negative 1, which is positive 1. So really I have 1 plus 1, which is 2. So when basically I go and do all of the foiling for this, I actually end up with x squared minus 2x plus 2, but I still have this x minus 2 out in front. So to finish off example 3 here quick, all I have to do is foil these two items. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 2x is positive 4x, and negative 2 times 2 is 4. So I combine my like terms. I have an x cubed out in front, a negative 2x squared, and a negative 2x squared. There's a negative 4x squared. 2x and 4x is 6x with a negative 4 out there. And there is what that original problem would look like. So basically, I worked backwards to find out what my answer was going to be. And when we come back, we will figure out how to use the calculator to find the roots.